Gezi, 2021 PDC World Champion. Do you think you've now changed the face of modern darts? I don't know, possibly. Um, depends how other people look at it, really. I, I think doing it in set formats and then longer format games, then it can certainly help where if you're a lot more in shape rather than out of shape. But I don't know. Po I possibly could have. Well, hopefully over the next couple of years or see, we'll see what other players are doing as well. So in so much as the, the physicality, that is a thing. And, it, and it's well documented, some players say about the celebration. But if you look back at players like Jockey Wilson, he used to celebrate a lot for emotional moments and, and they carry you forward. But I'm asking more about your belief in what you feel you can average. And we saw that full set. Yeah, it's, every game's different and it's the environment as well. Obviously, not having crowds and not having that buzz and the energy off them sort of can put you back on the back foot as well. But pro tours are different to TV events. You can't sort of get that energy and you have to be quiet. You can't celebrate. can't get yourself going. But sometimes that's where I play my best starts is whether I need to try and balance the celebration as well. You know, on, on stage, the same as what I do off stage. And um, I'm learning i'm still trying to find the, that right balance of of the celebrating and you know keep myself under control yeah and we certainly saw that in your match against gary there was a, a, a big degree of control and celebration it was a very good mix but going back a few years i i remember a time where you looked to me and said you now know you can win majors and you've delivered what was it that helped you make that step i just think experience you know you can't just expect to go somewhere, jump in the deep end and think I'm going to win everything because it's not possible. The standards so high now in the PDC, as, as you know, is it's ridiculous. But I can remember speaking to Merv King years and years ago and he always says it to me and I always used to turn up to tournaments. He said, well, well, what do you expect from today? I'm like, well, I want to win 10 grand. I'm here, I'm not here to lose. I want to win that. I want to win it all. He said, yeah, but you're new to the game. You need to take it step by step. You know, just think, oh, I want to get to the last eight last 16 and then once you've done that then move on you want to get the semi and win it and soon as I sort of got that mentality I just found that I went from strength to strength and not trying to win everything all, all in one go so that step mentality of of that sort of almost earning your dues is what also helped you start raising the expectation in the right way yeah well this is the same with all walks of life I mean if you want to be a carpenter if you want to be an electrician, you can't just go out and do it. You've got to do your apprenticeship. You've got to learn things along the way, you know. And um, I think that's all I've done over the last seven years. Each year, even though I've been losing and winning, every year I've been winning a lot more and just picking up a lot more experience and learning how to deal with certain players, especially the bigger players. So I didn't beat Michael. I think I was 20 and 0. But then as soon as I'd done it once, then, yeah, I might have lost another two or three. But then I'd beat him the next two and... I think over the next couple of years where I'm more and more confident in playing those sort of players that you know, the tide's going to turn and they're going to be losing to me more than I'm losing to them. And we saw that in this World Championship where you came from behind so many times and, and the commentary team are looking at, you know, there's a shock here or you're not playing well. And then almost suddenly you come roaring back into the game. How, how do you do that? Or is it just something that's automatic? I mean, if you, if if I'd have been the player I was maybe four, five years ago, then a couple of the games in in this World Championship I would never have won. I've just learned from my mistakes that um, never ever to give up. You know, as long as you've got a dart in your hand and, and they haven't finished finished the game off, then you've always got a chance. And especially against Stephen Bundy, I was three sets down or three three one down, but I've been in that situation before. And like I said, it always all comes back to to the experience of being in those situations and knowing there is a possibility to come back. But I've been in that situation where I've been in front and bombed games as well. So I've learned good and bad from my experiences over the last you know, six, seven years. So, so almost, almost, you, almost the mentality is if you keep playing, you're going to give yourself a chance and put them under pressure. Yeah, but I know that I knew in those games I was playing well and like I said, never ever give up until you, you can click in. If someone runs five legs off and you're, and you're, you're five one down, or saying you can't run five legs off and, and make it six all or, or, or even be six five up. You know, until like I've learned to be more positive and not be too much too negative or too down on myself 
when I first started, if I'd go a leg or two down and I'd bombed opportunities, I said I'd lost. I'd just give the game up and think, oh, here we go again. But now I've sort of learned to think more positively when I've mis missed opportunities, made mistakes. I, I just seem to know how to block those out and think, you know, move on, on to the next leg and I'll and, get more chances. And looking, going back about when a few years ago, when do you remember when you threw your first ever dart? No. Uh, obviously, I was um, really young. I was working in, in a pub. Uh, I can't remember when I threw my exact first dart, no. Well, what was it about the sport that kept you coming back after you started taking it a bit more serious? Obviously, I was winning a couple of local opens uh, around Wales, you know, the 300, 400, 500 pound tournaments. I was still playing rugby and I, obviously rugby wasn't a major earner for me. It was getting me by and I was, I was earning a decent living. But though those extra three, four, five hundred pound tournaments, you know, that, that, that sort of money meant a lot to me at the time. And I was on the internet looking at tournaments and then I'd go and I'd win them. And I was like, yeah, I can, I can earn a decent living out of this, even if I didn't make it to the PDC. And that's why I never really went. I was earning rugby money and picking up 500 pound tournaments locally. and. Yeah, you know, Barry's Barry Bear sort of twisted my arm in the end, and I. And and there's an interesting story there is when you you actually emailed into Red Dragon to say, would we sponsor you yeah, without reply as well? Yeah, and we, I, um, I and, we and we <laughs> and we and it was and we said, oh yeah, no, we didn't look at you then, and and then then Q School came, um, and your acceleration from there was unbelievable. But if looking back now, would you have changed anything about your early start in darts looking back, or would you have just done everything the same? No, I think I'm doing everything exactly the same. I know I went to Q school, no expectations, got, got through on the second day. I didn't even realise you had to pay to enter all the PDC tournaments, so I probably wouldn't even gone. No, I didn't know that it was under a pound entry fee every time you played. I know those fees in there now, but you know, little things like that. If I'd known little things, I probably wouldn't have even gone, but yeah, I'm glad I didn't even know that. Yeah, and it's, an, it's an amazing, isn't it, that... that on certain little decisions, things, how much hang. So um, outside of darts, it's well documented, your rugby career and your passion for rugby, but um, you also like greyhounds. Yeah, I still got a couple of greyhounds. A um, couple done with Tony Taylor and all, but I've got a new little pup with uh, Mark Wallace. Yeah, I've got a pup out in Ireland, which is being reared up now. So yeah, I've got a keen interest in greyhounds and you know, we never know, Sky Sports or BBC might start to show some some interest they did in the past, and I think it went off the boil. But uh, not everybody's into the into that sport. But I think where where did that passion come from? Since I was younger, I mean, it was a, it was an old man. Bill Beddows used to live in the village, and I was I don't know maybe twelve, thirteen years of age. Walk up to Bedwalty with him, walk, and then his dog would run, and I'd walk it back. He'd give me a fiver. So <laughs> yeah, anything it is money. Yeah, it's good and. In, in your younger life, there were you, there was one man of, of, who had a big influence on your life was uh, John. Um, he had an influence in your dark career as well. So tell us a little bit how John helped develop your career. John Mullins, though, yeah. Mean, well, not, not so much in in dart, but obviously when I was younger, my mum and dad never really used used to drive. Well, never really. They never used to drive, so it was difficult for me to get the training, rugby training, when I was going like. Islaine District or Gwen Co the County or anything. And not just for me, but John used to do it for a lot of other players and you know, he used to take me everywhere. I can remember one time I was um I was out on a night out in Cardiff and he and he dropped picking up his own nephew to come and to come and pick me up because I was because I was stuck and he was just one of those blokes that would do anything for anyone. And yeah, I owe him a lot through the rugby, but not so much through the darts. I think I hadn't really spoke to John for a couple of years. Not not because we weren't speaking, but just because of how busy I was. And now, obviously, he's, um, his health isn't very good, and he's off work, and he's just finding things to do. And, yeah, we're going to start. We just start in the middle of setting up a darts academy. And and that's for that's for the youth darts. For, yeah, so we're going to start that through through the local village, and just hopefully we get some interest in that. But he's, yeah, I, I through think... the rugby, John's been good to me, but... No, not so much towards the darts. Yeah, I think I think you will get some interest in that academy. So we'll uh, we'll keep that one going. And just uh, as a close, th there's been some d massive Welsh legends with Wayne Ritchie and Barry Bates. And did they have any influence on you, or was it more you wanted to compete with them? 
obviously Barry's had an influence. I used to see him at all the local tournaments and yeah, he used to tell me to go back to rugby because I used to beat him all the time. And <laughs> for, for two years, he was nagging me to go to Q school and I was, I was always a rugby player and I, that's, what, that's the only dream I ever had at the time. And I thought, no, I, I was earning a decent wage in, in, in rugby and I just didn't have the time. But then, obviously, like I said, Barry twisted my arm two years later and obviously everything else is history. Well, Gazi, thank you for your time. We are so glad that Barry eventually twisted your arm. 2021 PDC World Champion, Gerwin Price. Yes.